What's happening, guys? Johnny Pickleball here with Inside the Lines. We're going to be going over so many matches from the PPA Tour, starting with the Hyundai Masters a Mission Hills Country Club, Palm Springs, California, powered by Invited. And these matches, beyond breaking it down, uh, we're going to go over some of the great pros and cons of each match. And remember, I've personally never missed a shot from this chair. You know, it's much easier to say these things than it is to actually do them on the court. We understand the pressures on the court. So I just wanna make sure that we go over that part first and foremost before we even get started, okay? And the first match that we're even gonna be going over today is the debut of Jeannie Bouchard, man. Pros, women's, singles, the round of 32. Jeannie's gonna be taking on Ekaterina Biakina in women's pro singles, round of 32, man. And some of the things that we wanna make sure that we hit on before we even get into this match, things to look for, some of the takeaways is Jeannie Bouchard, right, forehand struggles, okay? We're gonna see that from the get. We're gonna look at some of the, the issues with the footwork even. You know, transitioning from tennis to pickleball is always has its challenges, especially with footwork. And it takes time to get that, that rhythm and flow a little bit. So you're gonna see that as we go through here. But the good news is with Jeannie, you're gonna see a little bit of progression as we go through this match. You're gonna see that the rhythm and timing that maybe wasn't there before starts to kind of get there a little bit better as we go forward, as this is her first match. I'm sure the nerves were in there and I'm sure she was feeling them, but you'll see with the forehand as well, that uh, little bit of timing issues. And if you don't put in the time, it's gonna be hard and it takes time to get the timing. So next up is gonna be, uh, we have Ekaterina Biakina. And as we look at her game, you know, understand that she had to stay focused. She had to stay consistent. She actually has been playing singles for a little bit longer as well. And so that played to her advantage during this match. She was able to, to not only keep her game where it needed to be to finish the match, but that's not always, that's easier said than done as well as we look at this match going forward. So we will look at how she was able to change her pattern from trying to pass into doing drop shots. And as we go forward, Look for those, even though they might sit up a little bit high at times, she kept on trying and she stayed consistent with what she was doing to try to make it to that next round, which she was able to do. So let's get started. Let's break it down. So the first play that we're going to look at, we're going to be starting in game one and Ekaterina Biakina is already up 2-0. So this is going to kind of highlight some of the forehand struggles that we're talking about with Jeannie Bouchard. And so let's take a look. She's going to try to power through a ball from very close up at the net with this forehand and come over it with a full Western grip. Let's check it out. Good forehand to start, but here's the volley and then coming up and you'll see that huge swing and then coming right over the top of it. And then it, with that full Western grip trying to go, I don't even know if it was cross court down the middle. I think she was just trying to rip it as hard as she could. But all good. Uh, she's learning that actually could have worked out to be a little bit better of a push. But here we go. So let's actually check out something that she did very, very well. So on this one, we're at 4-0 now here in opening of game one. And we're gonna take a look at something that Jeannie Bouchard did very, very well, able to actually close in and not take such a big backswing, which is gonna benefit her with that forehand versus trying to go so far back that creates more room for error. So check it out as she does more of a compact swing with that forehand, some of the better forehands that she did in this match. And Jeannie has a big serve as well. There it was right there. You see she's able to close in so quickly and then also use her athleticism while maintaining her body weight going forward and having the paddle so short, compact motion in front without that big backswing. Much better. But again, we still had those issues with the forehand. So let's, we have another example of the forehand struggles. Let's check it out. So in this one, we're going to have Ekaterina Biakina serving at 5-1. And you're going to see Jeannie Bouchard again having that forehand struggle a little bit. So let's check it out right now. And you can see on the return of serve that she missed, she went over the top of the ball versus trying to drop the head of the paddle. It's gonna make it very difficult. Great for tennis, tough for pickleball. And in the next one, we're gonna show you another highlight of that forehand struggle where she's brushing the ball upward but then having a little bit of struggle. But by doing the ball upward, she's not able to go actually through the ball. And so again, she's gonna have some of the same issues that she's had with these forehand struggles. Jumping ahead here, we're gonna actually get to look at some of the 
some of the same bad technique we've seen in that forehand. It's not that it's bad technique. It's just different. It's different. Pickleball being different from tennis. And we're going to look at it here now in game one. Uh, Katarina Biakina already up 9-1 now in this opening game. So quickly going from four to five to nine. So let's go ahead and run it and, and see what we got. But again, there it's right there again. So what Jeannie Bouchard is doing is she's taking the backhand or she's taking her forehand. She's taking it so far back. The timing's going to be tough. First of all, she's going for a very aggressive approach, overly aggressive, as we mentioned, uh, with some of the things early on of what to look for. And so by doing that, she's coming up on the ball to brush it to try to get that top spin. But then she's coming over it, which makes it actually go down versus dropping the head of the paddle a little bit and pushing forward. You still get top spin that way by coming from the bottom of the paddle which actually has a longer uh, or a uh, more surface area to work with from the bottom to top than actually trying to do the windshield wiper. There's a time and place for that, especially when you're up at the kitchen trying to hit downward on the ball when you actually can use your top spin angle that way a little bit more. But from back at the baseline, getting up under, she needs to have the ability to get under the ball and that's gonna be a different form and a different technique than tennis. And so we saw that there in that missed return and so that's just going to have, that's why she had about three, four, five, six missed returns and they're doing the same thing. Uh, the more time and reps she gets on the court, the more you'll be able to, to, to probably, she'll probably figure that out within a week. And so, which is great. And there's going to be some of the progression you'll see later in the match as well. All right. So we're going to start up here in game two. Biakina already took game one, 11-1. And so in this clip, we're actually going to be able to see how she's able to create pressure by getting in here to open up game one. And remember from the first part, we talked about some of the things that she was able to do very, very well against Jeannie Bouchard. And that was to just keep pressing that same spot that was causing Jeannie issues. And really she was doing what, what Biakina was doing very well was hitting the ball deep serves right to that forehand spot again, because Jeannie Bouchard probably missed about four, five, six, seven returns just in that opening game one. And so she didn't try to go away from it. She didn't try to go to the backhand and mix it up. She kept putting on pressure. And you're gonna see in this next clip right now, how much pressure she was able to do by just getting in with her footwork with that singles experience that she already has. Here we go. And although it doesn't look like much, you're gonna see Biakina just rush in and although Jeannie Bouchard misses the two-handed backhand, just that singles knowledge to know to come in. Because we saw Jeannie not come in. So that, that's one of those things we look for in singles is the ability to come forward on the return to create pressure on the opponent that's back. And it might not seem like much sometimes, but she did a really great job doing it. On this next point, we've talked about Jeannie Bouchard's forehand. So let's, start, let's talk about her backhand a little bit. This one's actually a very nice two-handed backhand. She's able to have a nice passing shot. So let's go ahead and run it and uh, check out the two-handed backhand. You notice that Biakini comes in, has a nice volley right to the two-handed backhand of Jeannie Bouchard. Still pretty compact, but it has enough power on it with enough pace. Uh, and something to look for later on, uh, and definitely in her pickleball career, is going to be the weapon of that two-handed backhand. Here at 3-1 in Game 2, we're going to look at Biakina, the ability for her to actually close, get in, after creating great depth. And so that's going to be some of that singles experience that she's already had for some time, being able to put, put to use. Depth on serve, able to come in and close with a great approach shot and then stick a compact volley. Uh, Jeannie Bouchard using some athleticism to be able to get to the ball, but unable to make a play uh, due to the precision of Biakina. So just that ability to be able to close in on, on placement and using placement more than anything in singles to direct the ball and kind of dictate the point, uh, big time in her advantage. So great job there from Biakina and able to close. Jeannie Bouchard, Probably needed to come in after the return, but elected to stay back. And due to the fact that she didn't feel like she had a good enough return. So kind of put herself on defense, but Biakina being able to take advantage right away. Another example of Biakina having some singles experience already. We're going to see in this next one uh, where she was able to serve, come in and finish. Pretty clean cut blueprint here for singles. And uh, Jeannie Bouchard just doing her best to hang in there. But on this one, this was pretty cut and dry. Let's go ahead and see. After the serve, she's going to be able to, number one, get great depth on that serve, which creates Jeannie to kind of have a short return, able to come in, close, forehand volley, back cross court, away from Bouchard, and finish. That is 
one of the easier patterns in singles pickleball to be able to just go opposite from that person but you also have to be able to create depth it all starts with the depth of the serve in order to be able to have that short return approach finish so great job by Biakina to be able to take advantage of that so every singles player would want that all the time to be able to have that easy pattern but she got it on that one all right, here in the very next point, Jeannie Bouchard, we're going to look at something that we we talked about earlier, and that's going to be her forehand volleys. It's a little more compact, so there's she's starting to make the adjustment. She's starting to progress, and, and we're going to see that here in the forehand volley. Instead of taking some kind of massive backswing, it's going to be very short, very compact, and she's going to get the winner for it. So let's go ahead and roll film, and I think you'll be able to see it. And, and she's able to also, one of the good things about Jeannie is she's been great at keeping the ball deep, and she had to go for it, but she closed right away stick the volley and and using the athleticism to the advantage of her which is always going to be something that she has going forward in her singles and doubles career okay so right now we're at three five here in game two so already a much improved game compared to the first one right so a little bit closer a little bit more comfortable we're all settling in a little bit and finally you're going to see something from Jeannie bouchard of where she found the blueprint we saw biakina do it right she was able to finish and, and hit a nice depth and approach and volley finish now let's watch Jeannie do it because she has the ability to do it and now we're, we're going to see that once we want her to be able to do this all the time right but shows that there's hope <laughs> there's the approach comes in two-handed big swinging volley finish and it's not that she just had a two-handed volley it was the ability to place it deep and get Biakina on the move going from one side of the court to the other but there's hope here we're going to go ahead at 6-3 Jeannie Bouchard to serve already kind of doing much better uh, in keeping this game relatively close. And yeah, let's just roll it and go through it because what she's gonna do after this serve, you're gonna see it right here. This is where the progression comes in. She hits the two-handed backhand deep. They get into a little baseline rally. Here's the drop shot, which we don't see very often from her. She's able to go left and right, moving Biakina around. Now the hustle in Biakina is pretty impressive with the footwork, but then she's able to close with the two-handed backhand, which we've already said is her strength. And so there's the progression that we've been talking about, that we're going to see that as we go through this match, especially here in game two. So let's continue on. So now on this next point, let's go ahead and get it rolling right away. Be Akina able to come in and do a nice drop volley with her backhand. That's one of those things that she probably carried over from beach tennis, I would imagine, having that kind of touch from that high up. So one of those things where you come from pickleball from other backgrounds, you can use those things as tools, obviously, to, to help and enhance your game itself. So great movement by her there with that backhand drop volley. Very cool touch. Okay, so we pick up here at 7-4 in game two. Much more competitive game as we've already talked about. Uh, in earlier, talking about Biakina, one of the main things that she was able to do was kind of change her pattern a little bit. She started dropping the ball. But the problem with that sometimes, especially if there's any wind or anything, if this ball sits up, that's gonna sit right into the high, high either forehand or backhand of the opponent. And so, although I applaud her for doing this, it takes time and reps and rhythm, obviously to get this ball down exactly where you want it. But like I said earlier, if I, I've never missed a shot from this chair. So this is much harder, to, <laughs> much easier for me to say than for her to do. And you'll see it in this next part where she serves, she's gonna be serving, be a keen to serve at seven four. Tries to kind of go in between there. Wasn't really a drive, wasn't really a drop. And so it's just gonna sit perfectly for Jeannie Bouchard's um, forehand for an easy winner and and one of those things that happens from time to time when you're playing is you kind of that indecisiveness so trusting your shots if you're Biakina at this point in time although it's getting a little closer and the nerves are getting in there trust your shots just go for it <laughs> all right so on the very next point we're going to see more of this where Biakina actually continues to try to drop Bouchard, which is really nice for somebody, especially when you're playing somebody that comes into tennis from tennis to pickleball, you want to make them earn that point. You want to make them drop it. And if you're ever in trouble, most of the time when, when people are in trouble off the court or whatever, they try to speed up and attack and bail out, right? So one of the cool things is if you're ever feeling off balanced as Biakina was a little off balance trying to make these shots, you'll see it. Let's go ahead and run it. You'll see what I'm talking about. She hits her serve, which is awesome, deep, great. Now she's going to start kind of working the point by doing these drop shots to make Jeannie earn it. Now, even though Jeannie does this amazing little like scoop pickup that earns her the point uh, or the side out, 
Bia Kina was actually trying to make her earn that ball, which you got to respect a little bit. The drops give her time to recover. And, and tennis players typically sometimes struggle with deciding on what they what to do with the ball when it's up at the kitchen. So I applaud Bia Kina for the drops. It's a good choice, especially when playing tennis players coming into the game. So what we're going to check out now is the opportunity here for Jeannie Bouchard, who obviously in game one, it was not in her favor. It was 111, came out, missed a bunch of returns, right? So in this one, this she has the opportunity right now. It's a big point for both of these players. If she wins this point, she ties. I mean, this is a, this is a big momentum time now. Opportunity. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to go ahead and roll it. I'm going to stop talking about it for right now. But here we go. Little nerves maybe cutting in. Biakina able to come in. Bouchard with a great trying to pass, but Biakina's footwork, exceptional to get that point. And there you see it, a little spinning, but you know, Jeannie had the opportunity there to go ahead and 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 just push the ball in, but goes for so much. We we're talking about that with the forehand, those forehand struggles. She went for so much on the forehand where it didn't have to be that good. She had Biakina on the move and then just overshot that ball. So really tricky um to get that touch and feel down a little bit but you know big point opportunity there for bouchard couldn't do it and side out to be akina so in this next point we have seven six be akina has the serve and we're going to notice some of the athleticism that's going to help the progression and not only probably the future of Jeannie bouchard in pickleball uh this is going to help her out immensely and it's just her athleticism the ability to move around and you know and we're going to see it right here after be akina serves up seven six the nice depth on the return from Bouchard and then the athleticism to close, crash, kill and finish the point with the volley. So just to get from the baseline all the way in to create pressure on Biakina and, and really almost get her with a passing shot at the same time. So those are the kind of things that, that have a great impact in singles. It's just the athleticism that Jeannie Bouchard has for her game going forward. Um, and, and obviously is going to be a tool and something that people are going to have to deal with. So if she can use that to her advantage and then become more consistent and place the ball, she's going to have a leg up for sure. So here we are in the match. We're at 7-10, Jeannie Bouchard to serve. So trying to get a couple points here to give herself maybe a chance to tying this thing up at 10 apiece. And, and we're going to see a little bit of a scramble point and the creativity of uh, Biakina to use a lob. So let's go ahead. There's the serve from Bouchard. Good return, decent. Nice passing shot, able to run backwards. And there's the lob. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it for a second. So on the run in, Jeannie's about midway. And, and Biakina is able to use some creativity and know that, number one, the sun is over that way. Two, that she's going to go ahead and lob her over her left shoulder. Whether that was intention or not, it was a great spot over the left shoulder because you can't really, she didn't have the ability to run around it and now has to deal with something that's very difficult in the sun. And the shot that Jeannie probably should do from this moment, as I'll unpause it, is probably gonna be a drop shot Trent, to try to give her some time to recover for the next ball. But we'll see what she does, given the fact that she's still pretty new. So it didn't look too comfortable even going for the lob in the first place. And then she's actually probably gonna, there it is, yeah. So she puts the ball high, and then Biakina able to just put the ball away cross court with a forehand. So trying to do something with that ball, but great creativity by Biakina, which gives her match point opportunity. And let's, you know what, let's just keep it going. Let's roll right into it. And in the match point now, we're gonna see Biakina do what she's been doing the whole time. Just get that ball one more time over. Give, make Jeannie Bouchard play. And there it was again, Jeannie Bouchard coming in, trying to close, doing a massive two-handed backhand uh, that is well below the net right into the net and that's going to do it these two players the nerves on both ends you know Jeannie Bouchard this is her first match we got to see some of the struggles that we talked about you know we got to see that there is there is some progression there's the foundation is there but it's just going to take time and reps and getting into it more and working on the, the the shots and shot selections will come later on too but the footwork that takes time and all the time also in timing and rhythm of everything in pickleball. Bia Kina did everything that she could, got a little tight, but the nerves on her end were that once it got a little close in game two, she got a little more hesitant, a little tighter, try, didn't trust the shots as much, but finally she was able to at least pull through there and uh, and you know make it to the next round. So good job for these guys, man. That is the inside the lines here. 
Johnny Pickleball. Be sure to check it out. We're going to be doing so many more matches to come from the PPA Tour. So we'll look forward to seeing you soon.